Uh, hello everyone, once again, yet again, and again, and again. Okay, this little video that I'm making, it was inspired by a good friend of mine, Mr. Rouse Our Saves Us. Uh, he posed a question that was actually really good on his own account, uh, hence why this is also put in as a reply. You know, so if you want to know what I'm talking about in its entirely, you should go see that one first before continuing on. Okay, now. On the soul, I think the biggest misconception of the soul is the treatment of it as an object. It seems to be the single largest roadblock to understanding what it's all about, you know, from how it works to what it's made of and how you experience it on any level, really. See, to me, soul is a force. It's composed of vibration, motion, emotion, and in special circumstances, it's associated with the things that relate to these qualities, such as, you know, temperature and pressure and color and form. Now, it's like trying to describe sound. You know, it's pretty difficult, really. You can't describe sound as an object flying through the air, you know, providing information to anything it smacks up against, you know. It's an effect resulting from a vibration in an object recreates a chain reaction of vibration through other objects including air, until it reaches you, where it is then interpreted by the conscious mind. Now here I'd like to touch on one comment I spied on his video about how if soul defined who you are, then how is it that things like disease and traumas that affect the mind can change your personality? Yes, it's paraphrased. You want to actually go and read it when you're over there. Now the reason why that this happens is because there's more than one level to who a person is. When talking about the soul and how it relates with consciousness versus personality, it is like comparing the psychological ego with the ID. I can never remember which one is which, but anyways. The consciousness is a large-scale background, of which we are but a fraction normally. You know, it's the really big me that sits and observes and learns from what I experience as a person down here, affected by the basic ideas, imparted by my soul, and combined with my learning and experience in the physical aspects of intelligence. You know, note the emphasis on the use of the word intelligence here, okay? It's not my consciousness, but only my conscious self, the part of the larger whole that works in the background that's down here. Anyways, I define the soul like this. The soul is the chief influence towards who you are as a person. While it may not be a direct reflection of your personality, it is linked with your personality dispositions, you know, the source of your callings, the instinctive drives towards specific topics or thoughts. It's the backdrop to your core nature as a living being. And what is it made of? Well, the soul is a combination of things, really. It's a combination of force, it's a combination of energy, vibration, emotion, and, of course, consciousness. Again, note I'm using consciousness, meaning the big scale, you know, as opposed to more transient implications of personality or intelligence. The forest, complete with the sunset sky and mountainous horizon, the winding stream and the wandering deer at its side, you know, as opposed to just some innocuous tree sitting in the middle somewhere. Now, what does it do? Well, it acts as a backdrop, like I said before, to everything that makes you, you. It's your personal divine self, and it's there to find its own divinity within the grand scheme of things. It's the drop of water trying to figure out where it fits in the ocean. Now, it doesn't really do anything, I guess, specifically. It doesn't take action. It just is. It doesn't facilitate learning. It's the learner. It's not the action. It is the thing doing the action. It's the force of consciousness and spirit that exists to experience and grow to better itself. I guess you could call it the God within. Or, you know, for Christians out there, you could call it your Holy Spirit. You know, it's the force of divinity and the desire to reach that state and to better it. Now, this was a really short one, but thank you, everybody, for listening. I hope that this little bit of rambling here made at least some sense. In the meantime, I'll say farewell for now to all of you, and I will see you next time.